So, Scotty, um, mm-hmm. let's dive. Now that it's almost midnight on the East Coast, so let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're gonna we're gonna get through this one. So here we go. Here, um, we we're gonna power through some of these, and uh, we'll we'll talk some talk some NFL here for you. So that being said. Bills and Jets. We're starting off with a uh, ah, starting off ooh. with this one, Chris. We're sta- okay. Jets looking for real, says Devil Doc Balls. Yeah, we have a couple Jets folks in the chat. Uh, but the Jets end up taking this one down. This was one of my best bets of the week. I actually had the under 47 and a half, and it hit. Uh, this was supposed to be, I I mean, the Jets have a decent defense and i think that the bills just this one i think they just maybe overlooked it they have a big matchup coming up next week so this was kind of a letdown spot for them but we still thought they were going to come through in this one i didn't think the jets would win this one outright but here we are 20 to 17 jets end up taking this one over the favorites to Take it all at the end of the season, and that's the Buffalo Bills. Scotty, what did you think about this one, man? Yeah, and uh, I, like honestly, the Jets were the better team today. Now, Josh Allen didn't play great. Um, his his two interceptions, Chris, were like two of the worst interceptions I've seen from certainly from him, but literally like any quarterback. I don't know where his head was on both those picks. One, I think, on their opening drive. Um, where he floated one out and just handed it to him, and then Sauce Gardner later getting an easy one. Um, the story here, like, we knew the Jets were winning some close games, but, like, we're like, ah, you know, even this defense that looks good on, you know, has beat, you know, played really well this far this season, hasn't played anyone near Josh Allen's level. Well, they play Josh Allen, and they, they you know, hold him 18-34, to 34, 200 yards and two picks. Um probably the de- best anyone's fared against the Josh Allen or the Bills in quite a while. So Jets, um, after a disappointing loss last week, carrying that momentum, get to 6-3. and three. I said earlier, probably the biggest win the Jets football team has had in a decade, Chris. Like, I'm trying to think what else could have happened in a decade. But um, from the offensive side of the ball for, for, the Jet, or for the Jets, Zach Wilson was fine, Didn't wasn't asked to do a ton. Kept a lot of it underneath. Um, didn't turn the ball, or at least, well, he didn't have an interception. I believe he did fumble, um, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I think Von Miller strip sacked him. But beyond that, they were able to get it done on the ground. James Robinson and Michael Carter um, combining for almost a buck twenty-five. And uh, yeah, big big win for the Jets to get to six and three and have a legitimate, you know, hope here that they they can be a uh, playoff playoff bound, Chris, which uh, I didn't see coming at the beginning of the season. Uh yeah, you mentioned Von Miller's sack, so gave him 122 and a half for his career passing Simeon Rice, who had 122 for 20th place on the NFL's list. So obviously adding to his Hall of Fame career. He's absolutely just insane. Uh but you look up at the standings of the AFC East now, Buffalo and New York and Miami. So you have Buffalo six and two, New York six and three, Miami six and three, and you have the New England Patriots dead last at five and four, still still winning games. But I mean, if you were to tell me that, you know, New York would be above Miami after all the additions they made and after Tua has been playing the way he's been playing, I would have been like, nah, I mean, what are you what are you talking about? But the Jets, here you are, six and three. Knocking on the door here behind Buffalo, trying to challenge for the AFC East. I wouldn't have ever thought well, that that's the case. And strangely enough, the Bills now fall to zero and two within that division. They've now their two losses to the Jets and to Miami, so they're the only team that doesn't have a win within that yeah. division against someone else in there. So when once you start, I mean, if crazy things happen and you know we get down to tiebreakers to see who's going to win that division. Right now, the Bills have their work cut out for them after two straight losses to the teams, a half game behind them in the standings at six and three to their six and two. Uh, good night, fellas. Thank you, thank you, Broncos, for being a part of it. Thank you for being Appreciate here it. tonight for the Sunday Night Football like sidecast. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, Jets Super Bowl champions confirmed any given Sunday, says Chop. 
Scotty has three kids since Jets' last big last game. One of last big game. <laughs> yep. No, that's that's definitely accurate. It's true. It's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Best Jets team since they've had Herm Edwards as coach, I would say. By the way, Herm getting back into the ESPN booth. By the yeah, well, you know, lost his job with Arizona State, so might as well. He is he's pretty decent in the booth. He's he's great in the booth. I like I like Herm. Herm's my boy. Uh, so I'll take it. Uh, Panthers and Bengals. So the Bengals, after kind of having a rough week last week, end up bouncing back and putting it to the Panthers, putting up 42, just absolutely just dismantling the Panthers. We were watching a little bit of this on some red zone, but uh, yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow getting it done in this one and uh, I mean, bouncing Mixing. back. So the, so the big story here again, Joe Mixon scores five touchdowns uh, in this game, which is, I mean, it's kind of crazy just to think that he blew up. I was, I was talking to a couple people here today that was like talking about, oh man, I got, I'm playing against Mixon. Hopefully he doesn't have a big day. He already has three touchdowns. And then he's like, yeah, he scored two more. So it's kind of another crazy. one and another one, you another know, another one, <laughs> another one. Uh, th they were counting touchdowns for Mixon like we were counting flags in our game tonight is pretty much how this uh, ended up happening. 153 yards, franchise record five touchdowns as the Bengals built a 35-0 halftime lead and cruised 42-21 route of the Panthers Sunday. Uh, Mixon, who came into the game with three touchdowns all year, scored four times in the first half alone. I mean, come on, man. I mean, what is this? Uh, Football Wife is, is, is absolutely just loving it. Uh, but yeah, Mixon, career day. He also caught four passes, 58 yards, gained only 27 yards on eight carries in the 32-13 loss to the Browns. So just to put that in perspective. But he became the first NFL player with 150-plus yards and four or more touchdowns from scrimmage in the first half of a game since Sean Alexander did it with the Seahawks in week four in 2002. Crazy. Wow. Wow. Bringing out the stats. Yes. Um, yeah. This one got ugly in a hurry, Chris. Um, offensively, the Panthers, we we, we got a uh, Baker Mayfield sighting today, Chris, because P.J. Walker was three for ten for <laughs> nine yards and two picks. Oh, man. And they're like, nope, can't play him. Bruh. So Baker came in. Baker actually had two TDs. Uh, 155 yards, but that was all in basically garbage time as this one was decided far before the fourth quarter where he got those two TDs. So, um, like I kind of mentioned earlier, Chris, I don't know what to think about this Bengals team. The moment I think, all right, they're playing great football, next week they'll just go ahead and have another, you know, turd game. Little shit game right in between, like they did against Cleveland on Monday night. So, um, I think they're good. I mean, obviously, they they represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. We came close to winning a Super Bowl last year, so they have it in them. But they're a little... They, they just need... It. The consistency is not there for me right now, Chris. But it can certainly get there, and they dominated a team they should dominate in the Carolina Panthers, who are just maybe the worst team in football. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty evident. I mean, they're, they're, they're the worst. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. Scotty, this game, hilarious. This was our. By the way, we are six and zero oh together betting this season. On oh yeah, this game we both had Detroit plus three and a half in this game, and I I, I was shocked at what I was watching early on in this game. We had red zone on. We were watching this here at the house, Scotty, both you and I, and we looked up and I saw Aaron Rodgers in the red zone. He was in within the five yards of, of scoring a touchdown and bounces it off a guy's helmet and it ends up being a turnover. Then later on, flash forward, the same exact thing situation happens. They're in the five yard line. They th he he snaps the ball, rolls back to his right, off balance, throws back to his left to Bakhtiari, <laughs> who's, remind me where he, what position he plays, Scotty? Left tackle, Chris. Left tackle. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Uh, and he ends up intercepted. And I was just like, 
Cornhusker, yeah, that play was awful. I, I'm with you. It was it was a bad play. And it just was like, if this is what we're watching here, I mean, it was 0-0 most of the way through this game. Neither team wanted to take this game. And finally, the Detroit Lions ended up putting up some points to, to kind of, you know, get a little bit of a lead here. But that still didn't change the fact that the, the Green Bay Packers just looked bad. Aaron Rodgers has thrown two red zone interceptions in the same game for the first time in his entire career. Never happened. There's a lot of first time uh, things happening here uh, for the Green Bay Packers and, and some of these other players around the league. But you're making history on the other end of the spectrum here, uh, Aaron. But yeah, there you go, Scotty. What, what did you think about this one? I mean, listen, Detroit, especially offensively, did not play well today. Um they tried to grind it out. A lot of carries for Jamal Williams, but not terribly productive in those carries, although not terrible. Um, Goff was not good. Not good at all. But it was enough, Chris. Like the, the At times, it felt like the Lions were trying to be like, all right, Packers, this is when like you go ahead and just annihilate us like you've done for the last 20 years, going back to Rodgers and Favre. Um, and no, like they stalled. He threw two picks in the red zone his third pick was just outside of the red zone and was a pick near the goal line on a on a bad throw over the middle um they they get down you know to the detroit 17 at the end of the game you think all right this is it this is when green bay squeeze squeaks through and finds a way to to beat their little brother like they always do and couldn't get it done weren't particularly close the fourth down play was i mean that ball was nowhere near sammy Watkins, so the Packers move to what are they now, Chris? Like three and six, three and six, three and six. Lions no. <laughs> hurt their draft odds for next year at two and six, but get a win. That's got to feel good after all these years of Detroit never being able to compete with Green Bay. At least you kick kick them while they're down. Feels good. Feels good. The Packers air train Rex SD Cola Court Husker. I watched it a dozen times over and over again. Dude celebration dance was great. Packers are hot garbage, says balls. Uh defensive lineman said it was his first intercession of his entire life. Not enough ayahuasca, says Cuban. It's Joey. Roger messed up his mi microdosing schedule. Can't confirm, but Twitter was chatting about Rogers blaming his teammates for this first two interceptions. Of course. Like the ones where he threw <laughs> to the defensive lineman and then hit the lineman in the helmet. I mean, he's it, blaming his teammates. It, it uh, it doesn't it doesn't surprise us, Scotty, that he's blaming everyone else but himself and not taking responsibility for just being awful. <laughs> let's just let's just put it like it is. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's I mean, there's not much else to to talk about. Green Bay, by the way. Uh, next up for Green Bay, we have the Dallas Cowboys. It doesn't get easier. Nope. It, it does not get easier for Green Bay. Nope. So that's going to be tough. And then next up for the Lions uh, is the Chicago Bears, who, you know, we'll talk about the Bears here in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so there you go. The Packers are on a downward spiral. It's not going to be good moving forward for them if this continues to happen. But, yeah, I mean... Aaron Rodgers, 291 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. Oh, man. It just gets it gets worse and worse. Forward down the field, says Chairman. Chairman woke up. Hey, he, 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 he's back for this one. Uh, just you in time. Get it, Chairman. <laughs> just in time for us to move on to the next game. But thank you, Chairman, for, uh, hey, your, 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 your boys, they, they got it. They got that win against Aaron Rodgers and must feel great. Uh, can't blame the Packers. They ran to a buzzsaw defense in Detroit. <laughs> that Detroit defense has just been dominating week in and week out. I still don't understand how they're two and six with that. You know, maybe one of the greatest defenses we've seen. <laughs> it's it's a juggernaut here. Uh, next up, we got Colts and Patriots. Colts continue to look just just awful. Uh, let's just put it like it is. The Colts only scored three points in this game and it was it was just not a pretty game for them uh Patriots end up winning this one 26 to three and the three points came in the third quarter for the Indianapolis Colts so it took them till the second half to get that uh Sam Ellinger only 103 yards and one interception 
Mac Jones on the other side, 147 yards, one touchdown. Uh, but yeah, there, I mean, this game wasn't exactly super exciting to uh, to to watch, and I, I didn't really see a lot of the yeah, highlights in this we, one. We had red zone on, and I don't even know if you you could have told me this game wasn't even happening, and I would have believed you because red zone's like no. <laughs> Well, one, Indy was never in the red zone. Chris, their their field goal drive you talked about, that was an 18-yard drive, Chris. 18-yard drive. I think someone in the chat, well, during that Tennessee game, or the Tennessee-KC game tonight was like, oh, is Malik Willis the future? And I'm like, ah, it's too soon. You know what I can say definitively, Chris? Sam Ellinger isn't that guy. I could have told you that before today, but after today, uh, he did throw a touchdown to the wrong team. Um, yep. That was a nice one for him, but... Uh, you know, Belichick, if there's one thing he can do is he can beat up on bad quarterback play and have a game plan to make them look even worse. So that's what happened today. I literally, nothing else matters outside of how inefficient the offense was. Obviously, you know, no Jonathan Taylor, but that I don't think that would have mattered. Uh, Mac Jones wasn't necessarily good either. Like 30 pass attempts for only 147 yards, but... You know, it was good enough when the other team literally cannot score, Chris. They can't do it. So, um, Pats get to five and four, even though that's, but that's last in the AFC East that we referenced before. And the Indianapolis Colts somehow have won three games, including one against my Chiefs. It pains me to think about that game. <laughs> like, how did the Chiefs lose to this Colts team? But our three, five, and one, and, you know, frankly, still right in the mix in that. AFC South. Not you, really. You want it, Tennessee getting a loss helps. You want to hear a rough game next week is Colts at Raiders. That's going to be a rough one to watch. Um, then nope. also, hey, thank you so much, Kenny, for popping in. Who's your Kenny team and where you're from? Let's go. Thank you. Thank Kenny you. Crew? Let's all Who's welcome in Kenny. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, Raiders and Colts next week. Patriots host the New York Jets, which could be a more interesting game. Uh, but oh no, Panthers! Oh, I'm so sorry, Kenny. Oh, uh, eh, I'm sorry. The Panthers should have played the Colts today, and that would have been a fantastic football game. You, you would, you would, you go for that draft pick, right, Kenny? You going for that draft pick? Is is what you're what you're looking for? Colts and Raiders, please tell me that's prime time. LOL says JK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please no. Oh, please no. Uh, Devil Doc Balls. Frank Reich is getting fired at the end of the season. It seems like it might be heading in that direction finally for Frank. Chairman, I have to ask, insert high-pitched voice, are the Patriots dead yet? <laughs> are they going to make a run? No. 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 I can't get out of my head with the Patriots when them losing by 100 to Buffalo in the playoffs last year. This no, team, they're not. They just don't have enough offensively. And quite frankly, they're not very fast. They're, their team's not fast on defense either. It's a little age. So, uh, I mean, I do not expect New England. I like, could they make the postseason potentially? Yes. Or are they going to make a run? No. I mean, there's questions. No, no, no. There's questions in New England whether or not Mac Jones is even the guy. And, and we've had those questions. There's, there's, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big, I mean, they've had a quarterback controversy early on with, Mac Jones. So I don't know. I, I that that doesn't scream in a division with the Dolphins and the Bills and the Jets. I guess. Uh, I, I mean, I just don't see them being able to get there. Uh, Kenny, the Panthers fan, you don't want you don't want Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. Interesting. Who do you, who do you like? Yeah. Like who's QB who's who's out? your guy? Those. I mean, obviously, most people have those guys at the top of the board. Um, so interesting. Like I, I'm hoping you're not gonna want to watch another season with uh with the uh, good old who you got rolling with this Baker Mayfield. It, it's probably not you probably want somebody there. Uh Joey, uh Patriots got blown out by the Bears is all you need to know. Chairman, yep. run to the playoffs. I meant uh I know you're going to know I know they're not uh, going yeah, yeah. anywhere. Yeah, not going anywhere after that. Uh, I don't want a quarterback because until we get a decent head coach or our quarterbacks will not fit. But you still need a quarterback. <laughs> like you, you still and, and when you have a top pick in the draft, you can't and you don't have a quarterback, you can't afford to not fire on one. 
you have to. Yeah. I understand that there's other spots on the roster you want to fill out as well, but when you have the opportunity to at least on paper get a guy that could be altering to your franchise at the quarterback position, you got to pull the trigger. True. You have to. Uh, I can't accept the wrong. I was wrong about Baker Mayfield. I thought he would be a comeback season for him. I thought he. we I, both did. We, we yeah, All of us did. did in the too. beginning of the season, we were like, man, he could be the potential top when Brady retires. You know, we, we thought that he could be the best quarterback in this division with not a lot of other quarterback options on these other teams. And uh, I'm he embarrassed, uh, I'm embarrassed it, to say on this show, Chris, it's imp- but I hinted that they could potentially be a sneaky playoff pick. The Panthers. Yeah. Before the season. That, that, that didn't go well. No, no, that didn't age. Uh, but we got Chargers and Falcons here. This game was interesting because the Falcons have been able to put up points. The Chargers have not looked good. They're the probably Chargers are the worst five and three team on the planet, probably. Uh Justin Herbert, 30 for 43. 43, man. They, that guy. How many did he have last last week? Like a um, hundred throws? Uh, and the week before that, like 150 throws. I mean, they just have him like on ice constantly. But uh, 43 attempts, 245 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Mariota on the other side didn't have a touchdown, 129 yards. And uh, Eckler, one touchdown on the ground. Pitts didn't really, wasn't really able to get anything going. 27 yards on two receptions. Uh, and Palmer, 106 yards on eight receptions. But the Chargers have been mostly a disappointment uh and we just i mean i just don't see the chargers really competing with some of the best teams in the nfl i mean they're they're struggling against some teams that they shouldn't be struggling against and i mean the chargers are doing what they we thought they would be doing after all the hype that they had going into the season scotty they only get this win 20 to 17 and i mean they had to i mean what what they they did it with six points in the fourth quarter to come back in this one. So, I mean, still, uh, they needed the go-ahead kick, and here we are, 2017. Uh, what do you think about this game? Yeah, I mean, listen, Atlanta battles, so I'll give them credit. Um, they've won four games. They play hard, and they're tough at home. But the Chargers, coming off a of bye, played uninspired football again. Chris, like, they just don't. I mean, they were down early 10 nothing. It looked like maybe this was going to be another Chargers special. Um, and they fall flat in a, in a game that on paper they should dominate. And quite frankly, they were lucky to win this one, Chris. Like, I don't know if you saw um, Mac, Khalil Mack's fumble. Basically, uh, blah, 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 as I'm talking, can't say any words. Um, Drake London had a, a pass that was going to be first and goal right right around the five for um, Atlanta. And Khalil Mack comes out over and while he's getting tackled, rips it out of his hands and runs for a long time um, to set uh, the Chargers up with good field position only for Herbert to throw a pick right after. But like plays like that save them in a game, you know, they, they needed, they just don't, I don't, I don't get it, Chris, because everyone, Every year hypes the Chargers, and they, you know, this coaching staff looks like they might already be done after their, this is year two um, for this regime, and they just don't look prepared. They don't look like they know they should be dominating teams like this, and they just don't. You would think we were talking about a team that's like three and five, or you know, yeah. two and, and six. Five, they, are five, five and they are five and three, so they are winning games, but they don't look like a five and three team. Uh, how many teams ended 2017? We had the Chiefs, Titans end 2017. We had the Minnesota, Washington end 2017. We had the Jets, Buffalo Bills end 2017. Uh, we had this game. So at least four, I think just four. <laughs> like it's uh, it's it's kind of a trend. It's kind of a, it's, yep. it's the cool way to end I games. I remember there was, yeah, three, three morning games. Um, and then, yeah, the Chiefs. Uh, if, uh, if Chiefs didn't win an OT, we'd be tied with the Chargers at the top of the division, pretty sure, says says Husker. Um, um it, with a loss, yeah. Would have been five and three. Now the Chiefs did win at least the first head to head matchup, but uh Kenny Crew, uh we got Bryce Young is in Alabama, is an Alabama quarterback only up there because he went to Alabama. If he didn't go to that school, he'd be a third round pick. 
So if I had to take one, it would be CJ Stroud. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I, I, I tend to disagree with Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young has a lot of ability. The The concern for me with Bryce Young is he's just not very big. He's small uh, and he's not thick either. So like absorbing hits um, worries me a little, but that's about it. I mean, he was the top recruit coming out. That's why he went to Alabama and for the longest time, everyone was like, that's the one position Alabama can't get is, a Q- is QBs, right? Well, technically, uh, Jalen Hurts and Tua haven't lost a football game this year combined. And they both, at least for portions of their career, went to Alabama. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's get to this Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Los Angeles Rams. 16-13 was the final here. Bucks improved to 4-5 and five Rams. Dropped to three and five. This was one of my best bets of the week, and it barely... I had to sweat this one a little bit, Scotty. I had minus two and a half for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brady throws a last-minute touchdown pass to beat the Rams 16-13 because uh, it, it wasn't looking pretty for the, the Bucks in this one. Both these teams were not looking pretty. We already know the Rams aren't very good, but the Bucks have been you know favorites going into this season to win their division. They've struggled. Brady's had his issues. And uh, let's just say Brady was all smiles at his press conference afterwards of how good it felt to stop his longest losing streak in 20 years. Man, he had the biggest smile on his face. Losing cures a lot, right, uh, Scotty? But mm-hmm. uh took the lead with 44 seconds left. Five of six, 60 yards on the game-winning drive. Uh, the record... No, fi- he took the lead with nine seconds to go. Um. 45 seconds left. Uh, no, I mean, oh, that's when he got the ball to start. Yeah, that that's drive. that's the whole drive. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, 55th of his career that he, uh, you know, game-winning drive to win the game at the very end. Um, he avoided his first four-game losing streak since 2002. So there's that. So he said, "We needed it. We got it." And there you go. Tampa Bay escapes this one, 16 to 13. Yep. And frankly, you look at Tampa, they're four and five. You're like, ah, they're still in trouble. No, they're not, Chris, because they get the luxury of playing in the NFC South where (laughs) nobody wants to win football games. So they are tied with the Atlanta Falcons we just talked about for first place at four and five with the three and five New Orleans Saints potentially making this a three way tie of juggernaut teams tomorrow night when they face Baltimore on Monday night football. Yeah, so this one, you have the Rams next up, returning home to host the Arizona Cardinals. Then the Bucks again, like you mentioned, travel to Munich, Germany to face Seattle next Sunday. So they will have a nice long flight. Uh, Who's going to be favored in that game? Oh, it should be Seattle. It should be Seattle. Uh, it should be Seattle, and I would expect Seattle to have the higher-powered offense. I, which I is- just look, Tampa one-point favorite opened oh i i kind of like i mean initially and i haven't looked into it very off very very much but i mean seattle seems like the play i don't know i think i like seattle in that game we'll see uh all right next up raiders and jags you had to sweat this one out a little bit scotty and this was one of your teasers uh the jags end up coming back to beat the raiders 27 20 because it looked grim It looked grim for the Jags at one point in this game. And you were like, man, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to cover this spread. And sure enough, the Las Vegas Raiders did what they do and ended up letting them back into this game. Trevor Lawrence, 235 yards, one touchdown. Derek Carr, 259 and two TDs. Jacobs on the ground, 67 yards after, you know, coming back down to earth from a previous uh, just blow up game to ETN. 109 yards, two touchdowns for him. So a big, big night for him. Raiders can't hold leads, LOL. Says Kenny, yeah, that's right. Diacola, good night. Thank you so much uh, for being here tonight. Love you. Thank you, Diacola. Um, at this point, thank starting you, to feel thank you. starting to feel bad for Raiders fans. Oh, man. I mean, the Raiders man. dropped to two and six. The Ra- Jags end up improving to three and six. So both teams still in a bad place, but the Raiders are in a rough one. Yep. I mean... I don't even know what to say, Chris. I talked about it earlier. I mean, getting up 
I think three different games this year by 17 points right off the jump at least and 20 to Arizona and losing all three of those matchups um, is just mind boggling. Like how, how that can happen. Josh McDaniels feels like a one and done here, right? Like, <laughs> like, like he may not last after this season. He might not get a second year. That's how bad it's been. I still don't understand why the Raiders got rid of their coach from last year who filled in after Gruden. I don't even remember the guy's name. But he did a phenomenal job. He did a great that job team together. Got him into the playoffs. All the adversity, like, like yeah. So I don't know where to head here with the Raiders. But two and six for a team that on paper was a playoff team last year. You add Devonte Adams, who by the way had two touchdown grabs in this game and went off a bit. Um, but it wasn't enough. They they folded in the second half. Jags come back. Get off their five game losing streak off the schneid a little bit for the Jags and move to three and six. But that pretty much seals feel it at two and six. It's just too little too late. Even for the Raiders to like make a run at this point, you can't be, <laughs> can't be two and six and hope to, to do anything like they're, they're pretty much playing for pride almost. And I didn't expect to be saying that after eight games with them. I don't feel too bad for the Raiders fans says Cuban. At least they get three hots and a cot says Cuban. Um, can the commissioner step up and ban Josh McDaniels from being from being given another chance to be a head coach? Says Chairman. I'd I'd rather just get to handpick what team he goes to next. Yeah, no, I think that would be so great. What franchise can he ruin next? <laughs> oh, let me see. Let me make sure uh, I got who these teams got next week. So uh, next week we have. The Raiders host Indianapolis, like we mentioned, and then the Jags play Sunday at Kansas City, where Jacksonville last won in 2007. There you go, Scotty. Before your children are born. Um, <laughs> by a lot. By almost a decade. By, there you go. So the Jags have a little bit of, little bit of catching up to do there. Uh, by the way, uh, real quick on the Raiders. The Raiders were shut out by the Saints last week and just blew a 17-point lead to the Jags. It's the eighth time in NFL history that a team has been shut out and blown out, uh, blown a 17-point lead in consecutive games, regardless of the order, and the first time since the Browns did it in 2009. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's just crazy. Uh, the Raiders are the first franchise to do this multiple times. In 1997, the Oakland Raiders lost 30-0 to to the Chiefs in Week 15 and blew a 21-3 lead to the Seahawks in Week 16. Man, it's not it's not looking great. Nope, <laughs> not looking nope. great. Personally, I thought the Raiders would be five and four at least, or five and three. Says Kenny. Nope. Uh, I mean, not the, not not. Not not this Raiders team. Nope. Uh, Dolphins and Bears. Oh, man. You want to talk about a strange one. Dolphins and Bears had some crazy things happening. Uh, let's just say Justin Fields had a, quite a game. Scotty? Mm-hmm. He had 123 yards uh, passing and three touchdowns. But yep. wait. But wait. But wait, that's not even the best highlight that he or the best stats that he had in this game. He also went for 15 rushing yard rushing carries, 178 yards, and one touchdown. Like the next coming of like Michael Vick and then some. Uh a record rushing day for Justin Fields, who just literally ran all over the Miami Dolphins in a losing effort. But Fields ran for 178 yards, the most by an NFL quarterback in a regular season game. Michael Vick had the previous high as 173 for Atlanta in a win at Minnesota in 2002. Colin Kaepernick ran for 181 yards in San Francisco in a playoff victory over Green Bay in the 2012 season. Uh, But one of those was a 61-yard touchdown, longest run by a Bears quarterback, and threw for three scores. So he became the first player since at least 1950 with at least 150 yards rushing and three touchdown passes in a game. What a crazy game. And then Dolphins again won this game 35-32 with, I mean, I think what Tyreek Hill uh, ended up being like uh, another buck 43 
The dude <laughs> almost has a thousand yards, Chris, in eight games. Yeah. So Tyreek's one thousand out of control. Tyreek's one thousand one hundred and four receiving yards on the season are the most by a player through the team's first nine games in the Super Bowl era. Like it's it's so between Justin Fields and Tyreek Hill, you have two things happening in this game that were just out of control from a stats perspective. Like, I mean, mind blowing. You had Joe Mixon five touchdowns blowing up like stats. You had these two blowing up this game. I mean, this is a stat packed weekend, dude. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I like. I think Tyreek Hill has more receiving yards than like ten teams' entire receiving core. Chris, like that's how wild it's been. It's wild, man. Seven for 143 and a touch today. Waddle added 585 and a touch. Um, they're open a lot. Two is fine in them. That defense is still gonna have to be a lot, lot better for Miami if they want to compete down the road in the AFC. But right now, that offense is dangerous, Chris. Like they got the best one two wide receiver duo in the league, and I don't think. At this point, it's not debatable. Certainly the fastest and, you know, sets them up for easy throws for Tua and he's making them and they're dangerous. Now, there was a controversial um, no call. I think we talked briefly about it earlier on a play on a potential pass interference call. And what's also sucks about it is Miami got handed one on a Tyreek Hill pass in the end zone or like in the first half. This one was a lot more egregious where Claypool their new weapon there um, was was getting the business from somebody on Miami. And they didn't call it. It definitely was P.I. Um, so th- on that note, it's a little unfortunate if you're the Bears. But um, if you're the Bears, at least, you know, there's glimmers of hope. Like Justin Fields looks like he's slowly coming into form and being the guy you hope he can be. And right now we talked about it, Chris, like, not that it's against great competition, but he's probably playing as the best quarterback from that draft class from last year. Yeah. This time. I mean, Justin Fields is turning it on. I think he's figured it out. I think he's starting to, the game is starting to slow down for him a little bit more. Uh, that was a PI, 100%. Um, that nope. no call was BS. Um, also, the Bears have done something also that, you know, is pretty impressive here for a team that's. Three and six. The Bears have scored 94 points in the past three weeks. They came in leading the NFL in rushing with 252 yards on the ground. They joined the 1976 Steelers as the only teams in the Super Bowl era to run for at least 225 yards in four straight games. So, you know, they're doing plenty on the ground, and Justin Fields was part of that today. So, big part of it today. Big part of it today. Next leading rusher had 36. (laughs) It wasn't, wasn't great. So there you go. Big one here. Uh, next up for these two teams, the Dolphins host Cleveland next Sunday, and then the Bears host Detroit next Sunday. So there you go. Uh, next up, Vikings and Commanders, another one of those 20-17 to 17 games. Vikings end up getting the win in this one. And this, uh, I mean, Commanders actually hung around in this game a little bit more than I would have expected. I thought that, you know, the, the the spread on this was kind of weird, though, Scotty. Remember when we were looking at this, like, oh, the Commanders, only three and a half points uh, difference from the Vikings in this in this spread. And we were like, man, this is a weird one. I didn't touch it. You didn't touch it. Uh, and for good reason, because this ended up being a lot closer than, than what people anticipated, given the fact that the Vikings are a team that most people expect to win that division before the season and currently. So... This game ended up close, but Vikings come out with the win. Joker, yeah, well, Joker, I mean, you like that even more? So, Chris, this was a ten point. I mean, the Commanders had a seventeen seven lead in the fourth quarter. Yep. Um, big plays down the stretch. Uh, a great grab for a touchdown, Dalvin Cook from Kirk Cousins, and then um, you know pretty much got back after a three and out and got it into field goal range and kicked a field goal um, with uh, almost with no time left uh, to get a 2017 win. Listen, I know don't take this the wrong way, Joker, because I know uh, the Vikings are a good team. They're a good team, but seven and one they're seven and one. I believe. Let me look all of their games. I want to say, 
except for week one against Green Bay and then their loss, every other game was a one score game um, and could have gone back and forth either way. So they're a good team. You know, they're just, I don't know. I just, it's hard to trust them. It's hard to trust them. And when I see them, I, I like, I forget that they're seven and one, like they're, they're, I don't feel like they're getting talked about quite a, you know, in the national press a ton, even with that seven and one record, but they're finding ways to win. Um, you know, obviously the normally seven and one, you're looking at first place in all the conference, but with the Eagles being at eight, no, that's not the case, but they've distanced themselves certainly from, from anyone else in the pack, uh, with the Cowboys being there too, a little bit, but, um, good for the Vikings. Do I think the Vikings are like a top five team in the NFL right now? No, I don't. I just don't. Top 10? Yes. Top five? I just don't feel it. I think, I mean, yeah, they're an interesting team. I I think I wouldn't put them in the top echelon with like, you know, some of the, like the Dallas and the San Frans quite yet uh, in the Philadelphia, obviously, because uh, they're, they're up there as well. But I mean, I think they're, approaching that conversation i mean a win's a win even if they're close but they are close so i get that i mean if you get close wins all the way through the playoffs i mean you, you're still going you know deep into the yeah, playoffs no. so and joker is a good point they they lost these games last year so yeah yeah they're finding ways to win games that they lost in the past so good for them yeah love it so uh with that being said the um the vikings end up playing here the the Buffalo Pills will be a challenge for them. That'll be a nice measuring a stick one. for the mm-hmm. Minnesota Vikings because, honestly, the Buffalo Bills coming off a loss here today against the Jets, I think will be you know really ramped up to play hard against the, the um, Minnesota Vikings next week. So it'll be curious to see how Minnesota can stand up to a team that's coming off a bad, bad uh, loss. So... That's going to be a good game for me to to really measure what the Minnesota Vikings can really do. If they put it to the Buffalo Bills, then maybe we we change the way we think about this team. But uh, Commanders on the other side travel to Philadelphia to go and and get buzzed by by that team uh, because Philadelphia is going to probably put it to the Washington Commanders next week. What's up, G Girl? How we doing? Welcome in. Hope you had a great day of streaming. Hope you're doing well. Fly Eagles fly, says Devil Doc. Um, What's up, G-Girl? And then we'll recap here. Speaking of Eagles, Eagles end up doing their business against the Texans uh, on Thursday Night Football. So this one didn't really have a lot of excitement here, but, I mean, the Eagles keep winning left and right, and they're proving this the, the world that they're the best team in the NFC. Uh, so they end up winning this one early on and Jalen Hurts looks good. I mean this this defense looks good. Hurts 243 yards, two touchdowns. Uh Sanders 93 yards, one touchdown and uh Goddard big big game, 100 yards, one touchdown. So, um but yeah, uh let's see what else do we got. So, oh, by the way, can we uh let's get a shout out. So I'll put a shout out for G Girl in the chat. Go follow G Girl if you have not already. She is fantastic, and she's covering NFL like nobody else. So go give her some love. She is fantastic. Um, there you go. All right, perfect. All right. Yeah, I mean, this one, Chris, not a ton to say on it. Eagles took care of business against a, a, a Texans team that's obviously on the other end of the spectrum as far as talent in the NFL. Now, were, was it a little sloppy from the Eagles? Yeah. Does that concern me? Not necessarily. I, you expect that short week on the road. You're playing a team that you know you can, you know, beat without, you know, giving it, you know, your full focus. So this was, you know, tied at half. It was a four-point game in, heading into the fourth quarter. Eagles did get the only score in the fourth to put it away. But um, a little sloppy, but they're 8-0 um, and, and feeling good about themselves right now. So, uh, and for the Texans, you know, I, I, Davis Mills might be in his final days as the uh, starting quarterback there. Uh, they're going to be in a situation where they're going to be looking at quarterback in the draft, I believe, as well. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, there you go. Eagles. Uh, let's see. Let me pull this up real quick and see. Uh, so, the Eagles obviously have the commanders. And then the Houston Texans. 
next week will take on the let me pull it up real quick uh the giants your giants g girl so Ooh. there you congratulations, go congratulations g girl you get a get a pretty get much the, a bye week uh, <laughs> no, coming off your bye week you get back to back bye week so g girl we're doing good i'm doing a little better now after a bit of a nerve-wracking and frustrating game tonight but the chiefs did get come away with a w so i'll take it i will take it sometimes you gotta win ugly yeah exactly so uh man what a, what a crazy week of nfl this was uh still uh oh we still got seahawks and cardinals here we See, got one more seahawks and cardinals is the final game kyler still is just struggling to find just any kind of success i mean it is call of duty you know that came out and he's been struggling since that game has come out uh but it just it it doesn't seem like this team is meshing i think that there's issues on the coaching staff i think there's issues with kyler even though he did a pretty good job here in this game i mean an okay job 175 yards two touchdowns kyler murray also did 60 yards rushing on eight carries so he was the leading rusher for the arizona cardinals but the seahawks six and three we wrote them off before the season even started and geno smith is leading this team also walker uh, is unbelievable uh in this one 200 109 yards two touchdowns in this and i mean between Gino being able to throw the ball and walker getting a lot of run on the ground i mean being a standout coming out of this uh you know in his rookie campaign i think like they are absolutely uh playing out of their minds uh and a surprise team they are going to be going to uh, overseas to play a little uh, little game in Germany. We talked a little bit about that already. Uh, so they will have the Buccaneers next week with that game. But, um, yeah, Scotty, what did you think of this one? I mean, it's just still wild to me that this team is 6-3. and three. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Even if you're the largest Seahawks fan in the world, you didn't see that. Nobody. Gino Smith... Coming off NFC Player of the Month, Chris. Offensive Player of the Month, Geno Smith. Uh, continues to roll. Um, had one really bad pass in here, actually, where he threw a pick six on a, uh, trying to throw one in the flat to his running back, and it gets picked off by the lineman who takes it in. But beyond that, he was Geno Smith, Chris. He was smooth. He was, you know, he's accurate. He gets the ball where it needs to go. Um, nothing like spectacular, spectacular, but he's just rock solid. Um, yeah, I'm, I continue to, I like, listen, I thought it was weird that the Cardinals were slight favorites in this one. I thought the wrong team was favored. I, I, I was afraid to bet on the game just alone on that because it was too weird, but I did take the Seahawks in one of my teasers at plus eight and that one, um, hit pretty easily. But Seahawks continue to roll, and if you're the Cardinals, you're probably frustrated. I mean, you, you were hoping to build off last season, especially that first half of last season, um, and this team has fallen flat. Now it moves to 3-6. and six. Uh, Murray's arguing all the time, whether it's with coaches or receivers at times. It's rough. He looks frustrated. The offense is just nowhere near what it was last year for whatever reason. Um, so... At this point, at three and six, it's a it's an uphill climb for them for sure. I mentioned Kenneth Walker now has five straight games with a rushing touchdown, tied with Kurt Warner in 1983 for the longest by a rookie in franchise history. So he's, I mean, you know, no Rashad Penny, no problem. We uh, nope. we we got you taken care of. Uh, and also, you mentioned uh, bets, but. Oh, thank you so much, Gamer Guy. Let's go. We have been crushing the Let's follows go. tonight. Let's go, guys. Where's get your that Shaq Shammy going? Who's your team and where are you from? Like to get to know you a little bit better. Let's go. Let's go ahead and look at our best bets of the week. Man, Scotty, it's looking really green. It is a thing of beauty, Chris. So a thing of beauty. With this, we have an opportunity, Scotty. We you had a perfect week this week. I had a perfect week last week, and I'm trying to go back to back here. And I need a little bit of help tomorrow for Monday Night Football. We have Baltimore minus two and a half that I just need to cover. 
Uh, and this could be our first ever perfect knock on wood week of the NFL. Like this doesn't, I mean, yep. And if it does hit, I'm sure a lot of people on here did it. 18 parlay, taking all these bets into account oh. and are, everyone's rich that follows us. Chris cash and everyone's in. rich who needs Powerball when you have us making bets for you. Yeah. You don't need that. $2 billion when you got us giving you all the winners.